He's here. He's here. Now, broadcasting from, from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. Who decided that election integrity is not important and who fights us at every turn? The left. Who decided that they were going to prosecute the leading candidate for president in three different venues? The left. And now taking a step further, now don't, don't worry about ballot integrity. Let's just take them off the ballot entirely. Who did that? The left. Yeah, sure enough. I mean, it's pretty well said right there. That is Texas Congressman Pat Fallon with uh, Stuart Barney, Barney and Company, Fox Business. Yeah, laying, laying it out pretty well, pretty well for what we're seeing in the anti-Democratic Party, the anti-Democratic Party, which we're going to be talking about in addition uh, to the marketing scam that the Democratic Party long has been. Break that down, but also how it's starting to backfire all of the overreach by the left here. We'll also get into the Trump trials, the timeline and the 2024 election cycle as well. Hey there, hope you are having a wonderful holiday season. This is obviously uh, not the the great one. It is uh, Brian Mudd. I always in, enjoy the opportunity and the time being able to uh, to guest and, and be with you uh, when the great one is away. I'm the host of The Brian Mudd Show, and you can catch uh, the podcast as well, The Brian Mudd Show, wherever you get your podcasts, at Brian Mudd Radio on social And uh, as we dive into what's happened here in the Colorado ballot case, it really has ripped the lid off of the the bigger issue with the left, with Marxist, with what the Democratic Party, as they call themselves, what they have become. And you you, you take a look at the situations in front of us right now. O for four. O for four. It's a bad batting line in baseball. And it's a really poor performance in courtrooms as well. So the Democrat Party's anti-democratic efforts to try to silence Donald Trump's voters. Remember, this isn't as much about Donald Trump, as it is about you and precedent. But no doubt they are scared, you know what, about Trump coming back to Washington. But anyway, until Tuesday night, the Democrat Party's anti-democratic efforts to try to silence you, that effort had been over for recently when you had a, a Michigan judge dismiss a legal challenge seeking to remove the former and perhaps future president of the United States from Michigan ballots, citing the 14th Amendment's insurrection clause. It was the third of the four related decisions to have been rendered on the topic this year, preceding the Colorado Supreme Court decision on Tuesday and prior to the ruling in Michigan. Judges had already tossed cases in Minnesota and New Hampshire. And notably, what the judge said in dismissing the case in Michigan but actually mirrored what I suggested would be the case right along. Quoting the Michigan judge, said the judicial action of removing a candidate from the presidential ballot and prohibiting them from running essentially strips Congress, strips Congress of its ability to, by a vote of two thirds of each house, remove such a disability. And that's the the, the case because Section 3 of the 14th Amendment to the Constitution, it reads like this. People will talk about the clause. Here's what the clause actually says. It says, no person shall be a senator or representative in Congress or elector of the president and vice president or hold any office, civil or military, under the United States or under any state who, having previously taken an oath as a member of Congress or as an officer of the United States or as a member of any state legislature, 
or as an executive or judicial officer of any state to support the Constitution of the United States shall have engaged in insurrection or rebellion against the same or given aid or comfort to the enemies thereof. But Congress may, by a vote of two thirds of each house, remove such disability. Right. So you got a lot of constitutional law that's complicated. That's one of the reasons that you you listen to Mark Levin, right? No better constitutional legal mind in this country than, than Levin. So yeah, a lot of the a lot of stuff in, in constitutional law is complicated. This clause, it really isn't pretty darn straightforward. They tell you very specifically who it applies to. And notice that nowhere within that amendment, nowhere within that clause, which is so specific as to the offices which can be disqualified under it, do you find the office of the presidency of the United States? It specifically states offices that are disqualifying under that clause as being a senator or representative in Congress or elector of the president and vice president. So why, if this clause was meant to prevent someone from becoming president, why does it state that one can't be a senator or representative in Congress or an elector of the president and vice president, but not also specifically state president or vice president of the United States? But holds out that, you know what, Congress can do that, though. Congress can can make the decision. So to the extent that there is any gray territory in that clause, to the extent that there's any gray territory in this argument, as it applies to Donald Trump, you have a man who hasn't even been charged with insurrection criminally and who was acquitted of it congressionally. You have a Supreme Court, a state Supreme Court, That is, you know what? He's not only guilty of something, again, he's not even been charged with in the criminal justice system. He's not only guilty of it, but he should also be disqualified from an office that also isn't included in the clause. And by the way, even then, that doesn't account for a legal principle known as the rule of democracy, which is a legal precedent whereby the judiciary is to pay credence to the will of the people to govern themselves, including the candidates they want to represent their interests. Details, right? Just just, uh, small, minor details here. Details that were so significant that even the original left-wing judge who issued the ruling in Colorado referenced that not-so-insignificant detail in the issuance of her ruling. You know, while taking the activist stance of ruling that Trump engaged in insurrection and her 102 page ruling, even then, Judge Sarah Wallace said it was insufficient for the purpose of removing Trump from the ballot. Quoting Wallace, she said part of the court's decision is its reluctance to embrace an interpretation which would disqualify a presidential candidate without a clear, unmistakable indication that such is the intent of Section 3. So again, you have a left-wing judge appointed by a Democrat in Colorado who was shown by Trump's legal team as having donated last year to the Colorado Turnout Project, a donation which Judge Wallace, in refusing to recuse herself from the case, originally... uh, She conveniently said she did not remember providing. If you made a a political donation to a PAC last year, would you not remember that? But you have a a federal judge who, I mean, just, again. But anyway, even then, you you have this situation with this judge. You know what? We can't go that far. So, A judge who aligns her personal values 
and personally funds organizations, which, by the way, the, the Colorado Turnout Project at the time that the judge donated to it, they stated that on, on their site, they said, we aim to prevent violent insurrections by addressing this problem at its source. If we vote out pariahs like Representative Boebert talking about you know, Colorado Congresswoman Lauren Boebert, which they were unsuccessful in doing, they said, we can turn Colorado blue once and for all. So again, a left-wing activist judge who funds organizations like that, even that judge could not bring herself to strike Trump from the ballot under the insurrection clause to the Constitution because, as she stated in her ruling, you know what? There's nothing within constitutional law that allows for her ability to do something like that. And it's that context that's key as we attempt to discern just how anti-American the four Colorado Supreme Court justices who ruled to strike Trump's name from the ballot, just how anti-American they actually are in this ruling. While all seven were appointed by Democrats, the three dissenters, they, they said it well in their dissenting opinion. As specific to the use of the insurrection clause for the removal of Trump from Colorado's primary ballots, You will find on page 144 of their 213-page ruling, you'll see this in the dissenting opinion. States, only a two-thirds majority of both houses of Congress can overturn a Section 3 disqualification. This remedy is extraordinary and speaks volumes about the gravity of the disqualification. Such a high bar indicates that an expedited hearing absent any discovery procedures and with a preponderance of the evidence standard is not the appropriate means for adjudicating a matter of this magnitude. Well, bingo, bingo. Again, Donald Trump has been indicted in four criminal cases. He's had 91 different charges brought against him. Not one of those charges, not one, is for incitement to insurrection, which was the premise of this in any case before a state court seeking to remove Trump from the ballot. So think about that. In a federal witch hunt designed to get Trump, you didn't even have enough evidence to attempt to bring charges against the former and perhaps future president of the United States. And this includes one of the criminal cases being entirely based on Trump's alleged role in the January 6th riot at the Capitol and his alleged role in attempting to overturn the results of the 2020 presidential election. A case entirely based on the premise of this ruling. They didn't have enough to even attempt a charge in a court of law. The bottom line is Trump could be found guilty in all four of those cases that he faces next year on all 91 of the outstanding counts against him and yet would still not be guilty of doing what's necessary for one to be disqualified from running for president or holding the office of the presidency. Yet the Colorado Supreme Court not only decided Trump was guilty of insurrection, but then to be removed from the state's ballot, citing the clause and a constitutional amendment, which doesn't allow for the removal of one's name in a presidential contest, even if found guilty. You want to talk about the anti-democratic party in action. This speaks volumes. We'll pick up there. I'm Brian Mudd, in for the great one. Mudd Lovin. Mark Levin here, folks, with essential information about a possible digital dollar and its impact on IRAs and 401ks. Educate yourself before a digital dollar comes with Augusta Precious Metals' downside of the digital dollar report. Created due to popular demand, this report is packed with important digital dollar insights. Best of all, it shares a strategy smart investors have used to hedge against economic uncertainties like the digital dollar. Act now to learn more with Augusta Precious Metals. Do it for your financial future. Receive the free 
downside of the digital dollar report today by texting Levin to 68592. That's L E V I N to 68592. Again, text Levin to 68592 or go to AugustaPreciousMetals.com. Text aid and message rates may apply. Performance varies. Consult your financial professionals before making investment decisions and get risk disclosures at AugustaPreciousMetals.com. There's not been any trial or any guilty finding. They're just saying this from the Colorado Supreme Court. So that's a very dangerous precedent to say that uh, a partisan court can just take somebody off the ballot. Of course, uh, the voice of Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, who still is running second generally to the former and perhaps future president of the United States, which, as we're talking about, you have the anti-democratic party's effort to try to just prevent him from from being on ballots now. You have a state supreme court in Colorado which on Tuesday in a 4-3 split decision decided, "You know what? Yeah, you know what? The, the, the constitution doesn't really allow for this, but we'll go ahead and do it anyway." What the heck? Brian Mudd in for Mark Levin and it is a patently absurd legal argument to suggest that voters shouldn't even have the option to vote for a presidential candidate due to a crime that he's not even alleged to have committed in the criminal justice system. Think about this. We talk about all the time, you know, innocent until proven guilty or, you know, unless you're, you're Donald Trump, in which, which case it's the complete opposite, right? I mean, a set of laws for the left, a, set of laws for the rest of us it applies in in many contexts especially in in blue cities and blue states but think about this you have a colorado supreme court that has decided that a presidential candidate is guilty of a crime he's not even alleged to have committed in a criminal justice system a criminal justice system which has brought four different criminal cases against him and 91 charges against him, including a case entirely dedicated to the matter at hand. If that doesn't speak to the size, the extent of the anti-democratic party's effort to usurp your constitutional rights, again, not Donald Trump's, but your constitutional rights, what's really at stake here, I, I don't really know what else would. And of course, in a non-criminal but political context, where the authority for disqualification rests, you have a charge that Trump was acquitted of having committed by Congress during the impeachment proceedings, which stands as the legal precedent in the case. So Democrats, after striking out entirely in the first three states, they attempted this anti-American maneuver. They pinned all their hopes on the related case in Colorado. It seemed like the Colorado justices knew this. We'll keep up the conversation. Take your calls next. I'm Brian Mudd. And for the great one, Mark Levin. Mark Levin here, folks, with essential information about a possible digital dollar and its impact on IRAs and 401ks. Educate yourself before a digital dollar comes with Augusta Precious Metals' downside of the digital dollar report. Created due to popular demand, this report is packed with important digital dollar insights. Best of all, it shares a strategy smart investors have used to hedge against economic uncertainties like the digital dollar. Act now to learn more with Augusta Precious Metals. Do it for your financial future. Receive the free downside of the digital dollar report today by texting LEVIN to 68592. That's L-E-V-I-N to 68592. Again, text LEVIN to 68592 or go to AugustaPreciousMetals.com. Text aid and message rates may apply. Performance varies. Consult your financial professionals before making investment decisions and get risk disclosures at AugustaPreciousMetals.com. Mark Levin, the voice the liberals want to silence. But you can talk to Mark at 877-381-3811. 
I will defeat him fair and square. No judges need to decide who can and can't be on the ballot. That is completely wrong. That is presidential candidate Nikki Haley. One thing you are seeing uniformity with is the idea by the Republican presidential candidates who obviously would benefit by Trump not being on the ballot saying, you know what? Uh, No, this isn't right. And this is no way to win. And it's not right because, well, we, we've got this pesky little thing called a constitution. And the constitution, uh, well, it, it allows for a process under which one might be disqualified from the office of the presidency. And as it turns out, the former and perhaps future president of the United States was was acquitted when tried in Congress under that related charge. And otherwise has not been charged in the criminal justice system for it. Uh, Brian Mudd here for the great one, Mark Levin. And as we are taking a look at uh, the couple final days here before Christmas, if you're still thinking, you know what? Uh, I need to figure something out, a gift, a stocking stuffer. How about the Democrat Party hates America? I mean, quite evident as we're talking about the anti-democratic party and the lengths that they are now going to to try to usurp your constitutional rights to try to prevent you from being able to vote for who you want to be able to vote for. Uh, The uh, perfect gift is the Democrat Party hates America. And you can also get an autographed copy at LevinSigned.com. That's LevinSigned.com. So check it out. So, again, you had as we take a look at the the Colorado ballot access case you had a a state where the entire supreme court was appointed by democrats a state where democrats went all in the original federal judge a democrat that donates to left-wing PACs, a supreme court that is is stacked all in their direction and even then the best they were able to do in their mission to prevent voters from choosing who the next president of the united states should be was to lose on the initial judge's ruling and to gain a 4-3 split and an anti-American decision by the state Supreme Court. And so it illustrates a couple really important points. First, that what's happened here is so radical that even half of the leftist radicals on the bench in Colorado who've considered disqualifying Trump from a ballot have said it can't be done. And second, just how anti-American and anti-democratic the Democrat Party and many of their activists on benches really are. You have judges who want to prevent you from being able to vote for you, who you want to be able to vote for, for who you want to lead this country. And, and it just does not come any more anti-American or anti-democratic principles than that. Let's go to Charles in Alabama. Charles, welcome to the show. Thanks for taking my call. You bet. Uh, I've been listening to you talk, and I've been listening to this channel for most of the day. And while I don't agree with the decision to take him off the ballot, they're well within the rights to do so. Colorado is a sovereign state. The voters of Colorado elected the judges that made the decision. And the 14th Amendment does not say one has to be convicted of insurrection or rebellion. It just says you have to engage in it. If the judges find by preponderance of evidence that Trump engaged in insurrection, he can be removed from the ballot. But by the way, being removed from the ballot doesn't mean that the people in Colorado can't vote for Donald Trump. There's a thing called write-in. He's got the support. Everybody in Colorado can write his name in. He can still win in Colorado. So I'm not sure what anyone is being deprived of. No one's being deprived of the right to vote for the candidate of their choice because all they have to do is pull out their pen and write in his name. Okay, so this is fascinating in a couple of respects, and I'll address what you've said here. But I'm curious, do you have any concerns about the precedent this type of decision can set and what ultimately can be decided by a state court as it pertains to Guilt or innocence without due process. Okay, well, I was alive. Because, and and I'll I'll, uh, expand upon that, Charles, because what you've said is that uh, preponderance of evidence is is enough. There's no due process in the Colorado case pertaining to incitement to insurrection. 
Again, Donald Trump has not been charged with this, not even in the January 6th related case. They couldn't even find enough evidence to bring a charge. So there was no due process. You're, you're saying that they can find that he's guilty in preponderance of evidence, which, by the way, the dissenting Colorado Supreme Court decision said has no bearing in a case of this magnitude. They specifically said that. Uh, but do you have any any concerns uh, about somebody just being able to say without due process? Yeah, you're guilty. I agree that I'll, I'll put it this way. I'll, I'll just say this. All of this is going to work out in the end. And like I said, oh, okay. what does it matter if his name is removed from the ballot? People can still vote for him. You're kind of missing the bigger point, uh, Charles. Uh, first and foremost, not having one's name on the ballot, uh, which uh, you're, you're saying is not a big deal because they can just write it in. I, I think we all realize that, in fact, that is a pretty big deal. And yes, as we are talking about the specifics of what's been decided right now, it is only a ruling that applies to the Republican primary contest in Colorado and the Supreme Court decision in Colorado has been stayed until January 4th, allowing room for an appeal, an appeal that's going to be coming. And we'll talk about, uh, you know, to the United States Supreme Court, which no doubt is going to overturn this unconstitutional ruling. But the bigger issue, and, and this is where it really becomes concerning, that type of mindset is that you really don't care. You just really don't care about due process. I don't like Trump. Or I think he, he he's guilty of it. And because I think he is. Eh, screw the Constitution. Screw due process. Just, you know, kind of like uh, Caesar. You can have a thumbs up or thumbs down situation by federal judges. And that decides the outcome. Now, the other, as you were referencing... The well, this is a, a state court state run you know, in, in, a, in essence. Uh, what you're saying, Charles, is that well, states run elections, which is true uh, that we are talking about a federal election. But more to the point, if this was a state case about state law, that would be one thing. This was not a, a state case about state law in the way they ruled. However, they used the United States Constitution. So you can't have your cake and eat it, too. You can't say, well, you know, this was. Uh, you know, a state just doing what a state's going to do about their election and then bring in the United States Constitution into the mix. At the point where you are applying the disqualification standard under the insurrection clause, it has to meet that threshold, which has been, as has been laid out by the original Colorado judge who ruled in this case and by the three dissenting justices and by the judges in the three other states which had thrown out this case uh, previous to the Colorado decision. It's what, in all of those instances, uh, they, they found. Uh, so, you know, details, details. And again, we actually have had a trial. There has been a trial pertaining to Donald Trump and incitement to inter- insurrection. And it did happen where the Constitution calls for this thing to happen. It happened in Congress. And the fact of the matter is that Donald Trump was acquitted of insurrection. So you can have your opinion all day long that you think he did it. As these anti-American judges and justices have done. But it doesn't change the facts. And it doesn't change the Constitution. And if you just want to throw all that away... You got a lot more to worry about than just who the next president of the United States is is going to be. Let's go to Jim in Kentucky. Jim, welcome to the show. So, with that being said, well, we can we we say he's guilty, so he's guilty, so we can charge him with it. But well, and that's the other thing too. People could write it in, but that doesn't mean they're going to count the vote just because you wrote it in. They've already said he's not on the ballot, so we're not going to count it even if you write it in. But my points were, so wouldn't all these people that went after him, all these different charges, they tried to bring the whole four years he was in office, trying to remove him from office, could that not be considered a form of insurrection? Because they were trying to remove him from office and take over power. Yeah, I mean, uh, you, you make a, a compelling point uh, to election interference uh, to trying to usurp a a federal government. Uh, Certainly, 
the actions that were taken by the Obama administration, Obama administration officials, and then other officials within the federal government during the time that Donald Trump was president of the United States, as were well documented in John Durham's report. You, you could certainly make the case that if you wanted to, that would rise to the level of of insurrection, perhaps of, of trying to exact an outcome to overthrow the federal government, to overthrow the rightfully elected leader of the United States of America. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, they, in fact, you can make the far more compelling case that way if you wanted to. And again, if there were anything, anything, we, we've got four criminal cases, two which pertain to the alleged interference by Donald Trump to overturn the 2020 election results, one in Georgia, one at the federal level. And with four cases, two that pertain to the topic, 91 different charges, you still didn't have enough evidence to even bring a single related charge in the criminal justice system against Donald Trump. And and that speaks volumes again about the extent of the lawlessness, the anti-democracy uh, angle that, that's taking place here in Colorado. Let's go to Sue in California. Sue, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you. Can you hear me? We got you loud and clear. Can you hear me? Yes, Sue, we oh, have fantastic. You. I am just wondering. I'm wondering if we could file a class action lawsuit against California for trying to take Trump off the ballot. Yes, yeah, Sue. That so, and what what you're talking about here is. Uh, Subsequent to this decision in Colorado, you have a number of of states where there are efforts that are still underway to also try to remove Donald Trump from the ballot. And you had the lieutenant governor of California has now come out and said they should do anything under their power using the Colorado precedent that has been set to get Donald Trump off of of the ballot. I mean, in, in a legal sense, you know, filing a lawsuit against the state of California, I mean, the first thing is they would actually have to take action, um, you know, for there to, to be an effort. The other is when you're you're filing a uh, a class action lawsuit, it has to be granted class status. So there are a number of, of things that would need to happen first. Uh, the answer at this point is we are, we are not there um, and, and hopefully never will be. It is important that the United States Supreme Court take up this case and rule uh, sooner than later, which one might imagine they would, given all the implications that are out there with with all of these other states. And again, they, the, the question here right now is uh, about the Republican presidential primary in Colorado, which, by the way, if this were allowed to stand, you have the Republican Party in Colorado that said, you know, well, forget this. We're going to scrap the whole primary process and go to a caucus uh, system and, and instead to come up with uh you know, with, with our candidate. So they, they would do an end around there that way. But you, you're you really need the Supreme Court to step in and, and put an end to the nonsense all across the country. And, and that's at this point, the best way, the most efficient way to to deal with it, trying to get class status for, for something that's yet happened is is not very likely to uh, to come to fruition. Let's go to Jerry in New Jersey. Jerry, welcome to the show. Yeah. Hi, Brian. I want to make a couple of points to clear up a few things that I don't think anyone's really talking about. And I'm a Trump supporter, and I do believe that the main reason that all four cases and 91 charges should be dropped and dismissed is because prosecutorial misconduct is very simple. If the primary purpose of a prosecution is not the underlying crime, but is for political interference, if that's more likely than not, I think we can pretty much all see that, then the cases have to be dismissed because the purpose is not about the underlying criminal thing. The primary purpose is to stop Trump from running. So that's point one. Now, the next thing, though, is unfortunately in Colorado, that Judge Wallace that you're talking about, she's no hero at all. She knew full well that the upper court would decide the law, and they're in a better position to decide the law because they have more prestige, et cetera, and they're in the right position to make the final call on a state law anyway. But what she did was really nasty and really bad. She made a finding of fact after a five-day trial that Trump was guilty of insurrection, and that is what's really bad. 
because if she had just said that he was innocent, this case would totally have been over. She knew darn well she was sending it to the liberal courts for the decision on the law, but she made a crazy decision on a fact. You're absolutely right. It's a good call, Jerry, and I appreciate the call. What you had was, you know, in her decision without due process. Yeah, you know what? Trump is, is guilty of insurrection. She then came back and said, but he still can't be removed from the ballot using the Insurrection Act under the Constitution. You had the Colorado Supreme Court that allowed her decision on insurrection to stand while overturning her ballot decision. Uh, so the precedent that was set there, you, you could say, laid the groundwork. And it very well may have been strategic to your point. I'm Brian Mudd, and for the great one. Mud Lovin. Mark Levin here, folks, with essential information about a possible digital dollar and its impact on IRAs and 401ks. Educate yourself before a digital dollar comes with Augusta Precious Metals' downside of the digital dollar report. Created due to popular demand, this report is packed with important digital dollar insights. Best of all, it shares a strategy smart investors have used to hedge against economic uncertainties like the digital dollar. Act now to learn more with Augusta Precious Metals. Do it for your financial future. Receive the free downside of the digital dollar report today by texting LEVIN to 68592. That's L-E-V-I-N to 68592. Again, text LEVIN to 68592 or go to AugustaPreciousMetals.com. Text date and message rates may apply. Performance varies. Consult your financial professionals before making investment decisions and get risk disclosures at AugustaPreciousMetals.com. I want voters to make this decision, not courts. And I think that it's dangerous for our country to have courts make this decision at this moment. Yeah, Chris Christie there. Again, it's one thing that all Republican challengers to Donald Trump can agree on, uh, that what happened in Colorado on Tuesday is anti-American. It certainly is anti the democratic process. But it was the judge in the Michigan case that outlined precisely how the story ends. The, The story ends with Trump's name on ballots. It's just a matter of how soon we get there. As Trump attorney Alina Haba said to Breitbart News after the ruling, there is a 100 percent chance this decision will be overturned on appeal to the United States Supreme Court. 100 percent chance. This is as clear of an example as to why one should always refer to the Democrat Party as opposed to the marketing scam that is the Democratic Party. Because there's nothing democratic about it. They and their leftist interest groups, so they're quite literally attempting to violate constitutional law to deny voters the choice to vote for who they want to vote for. Now, it would be accurate to refer to it as the anti-democratic party. Now, that is very much an accurate description. It's full of anti-Americans that must be defeated at each In every turn, from local elections to federal elections, because when they win, well, they most commonly govern like anti-Americans and those who are in a position to do so. What they do, they appoint judges who rule as anti-Americans. Consider that if the United States Supreme Court's composition were similar to that of the Colorado Supreme Court, we'd be facing a situation next year's presidential election we wouldn't want to imagine. Brian Mudd in for the great one, Mark Levin. This segment of the podcast is exclusively sponsored by Pure Talk. Pure Talk offers great coverage and can save your family money on your wireless bill every single month. Go to puretalk.com to find the plan that's right for you. Thank you again for listening, and thank you so much for this sponsorship, Pure Talk. He's here. He's here. Now, broadcasting them from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. 
In California's, Lieutenant Governor says the Colorado decision can be the basis for a similar decision here in our state. The Constitution is clear. You must be 35 years old and not be an insurrectionist. Yeah, that is Fox's Peter Ducey uh, reporting on a concern that was discussed by a caller in the first hour of the show. That now that you have the Colorado Supreme Court ruling in their 4-3 decision that Trump should not be on the Republican primary ballot as a starting point. That's what it is. It's a starting point. Now you have other like-minded individuals in other states that are seeking to immediately try to get Trump off of ballots. One thing to keep in mind with all this, too, the timetable here. Coming up in mid-January, we have votes that start to count. You've got the Iowa caucus that's coming up mid, uh, mid-January. mid and, and so if you're an election supervisor, the window of time you have to prepare ballots at the first of the state level, but then also at the local level, that is really getting down to, to crunch time right now. So we're in a very important window of time where... Something needs to be definitive. That's why you're going to see a rush like California. The lieutenant governor, anyway, is is now engaged in a trying to make that happen. And you have outstanding legal challenges trying to get Trump's name off of ballots in numerous states across the country. Again, you had three states that already threw the case uh, out when it was brought before them. The United States Supreme Court ultimately is going to be the answer Uh, in in making this nonsense stop. The real takeaway from the Colorado Supreme Court ruling, as I was discussing in the first hour, it's much bigger than even next year's election specifically. It's that our representative republic is at stake, and it's very much the anti-democratic party that is seeking to take it away from us. I'm Brian Mudd, in for... The great one, Mark Levin. I host the Brian Mudd Show uh, based out of my home station, WJNO in West Palm Beach. You can catch the Brian Mudd Show podcast wherever you get your podcast. You can find me at Brian Mudd Radio on social. It is always an honor and a pleasure getting to spend time with you, uh, guesting for for Mark Levin. And as I've been talking about uh, the anti-democratic party in the context of the Colorado Supreme Court ballot decision regarding Trump. Also reference the marketing scam that is the Democratic Party. And this, I think, is worth having a conversation about. Now that pretty much everything is out the bag. The definition of of democracy. According to Merriam Webster, I know it seems silly because we, we know what democracy is, right? But just, you know, let's go to the book. According to Merriam-Webster, the definition of democracy is a government by the people, especially the rule of the majority. Okay, a government by the people, especially the rule of the majority, a government in which the supreme power is vested in the people and exercised by them directly or indirectly through a system of representation, usually involving periodically held free elections. Hmm, Okay, a government in which the supreme power is vested in the people doesn't say anything about like, you know, federal judges or anything. A government in which supreme power is vested in the people and exercised by them directly or indirectly through a system of representation, usually involving periodically held free elections. The definition of democratic is this. Of relating to or favoring democracy. Okay, of relating to or favoring democracy. That's democratic. All right, so as President Reagan famously said, he said, freedom is never more than one generation from extinction. We didn't pass it on to our children in the bloodstream. It must be fought for, protected, and handed on for them to do the same. Or one day, we will spend our sunset years telling our children and our children's children what it was once like in the United States where men were free. And that's fundamentally what the Colorado case and the other related challenges brought in other states. All the efforts to remove Donald Trump from ballots, that's really what it's about. You have people that want to make this about Trump. This really 
isn't about Trump. It is as big as Donald Trump is. It's much bigger than Donald Trump. It's our fundamental rights as Americans and our founding principles in this country that are at stake. Again, you had Donald Trump get tried in impeachment proceedings under the premise of insurrection, incitement to insurrection, and he was acquitted of it. And otherwise, He's not even been tried in the criminal justice system, not even been charged with having committed this. Yet you had a state Supreme Court say without due process, no due process, guilty. If they can do that and they can do that to Donald Trump, what could they do to you? Now, many correctly wondered what the left might do in 2024 after the successful 2020 shenanigans to use COVID as an excuse to do an end around election integrity laws in many states the last time around, you know, which generally manifested itself in just mailing out ballots to every person, every dead person, every puppy uh, that may have been present at any given time in any given state. Right. So a- after all that went down and you had many states that were involved in that, like Georgia, for example, that passed election integrity laws that could see to it that we wouldn't have a repeat, even if COVID was tried as an excuse yet again. But anyway, in the the context of people wondering, well, what could it be in 2024? Well, I you're getting a pretty pretty early and, and pretty big indication of how far the left is willing to go because it doesn't get any bigger than this. As I've discussed, the so-called Democratic Party is proving itself to be anything but Democratic. And not that this is anything new. As an example, just ask Bernie Sanders about how the Democrat Party rigged the primary process against him in 2016 and 2020. But what's also instructive in the context of this conversation is the marketing scam that has always been in play for Democrats. Now, as an astute political observer, which as a listener to this show, I imagine you are. It might seem absurd to you that people could be so easily swayed to associate with and to vote for candidates for office just based on a party's name. But it's very much the case for many voters historically. And Democrats have throughout time relied on raking in new generations of what the late, great Rush Limbaugh coined low-information voters. Right? We all know who the low-information voters are. Voters that often think that joining the Democratic Party, I mean, after all, they're called the Democratic Party. They call themselves the Democratic Party. So if I join that, and if I vote for Democrats in elections, well, shoot, that means that I'm supporting democracy. In lieu of supporting And joining with the Marxist that they've commonly been supporting. They often might believe they're liberal. And thus they're supporting freedom by supporting liberal principles. By supporting liberals. Without realizing that the Democrat Party is about as far from classical liberalism as there is. You do not find any classic liberalism in the Democrat Party today. For anyone who doubts that, by the way, just compared just compare what happened on, on the campus of Berkeley in the 60s to even what's allowed to happen on Berkeley's campus today. So that's commonly been the case for young, low information voters coming of age in this country. But it's not the only example. In recent generations, Democrats have also commonly been highly successful at recruiting legal Immigrants in this country. I'm not the open border Biden illegal supporting by the millions now, but but legal immigrants into this country and commonly first generation Americans as well. Legal immigrants and children who've often fled oppressive governments seeking freedom, seeking a say in a system of government and without greater context for political parties in this country. It's been pretty easy for the Democrat Marxists to present their party as the one 
that supports those principles. Because look, it's in the name. But increasingly, what they've shown in their effort to get Trump is how anti-democratic they really are. And now, even the low-information voters are catching on to it. You've increasingly been hearing about how Republicans have, and, and most commonly Donald Trump specifically has, been making inroads with legal immigrants and their families. In South Florida, we've been ground zero for that. Not the only place, but ground zero. The huge turnaround in, in Florida from being the ultimate swing state to now being a red state. I mean, yeah, it has to do with a lot of people that have said, you know what, uh, I, I'm out of my blue state and I want freedom. But it's also, I, I mean, the actual bigger part of it has been with legal immigrants and their families recognizing the Democrat Party for what it is. So just as we had seen with with voters that were coming of age, you have long had legal immigrants and their families that have been brought in at times by the marketing scam of the Democratic Party. I was um, thinking about this today. You had a New York Times opinion piece. Had to go back and, and find it. It was January 7th of 2022. Entitled, We Barely Qualify as a Democracy Anymore. Democratic voters fear for America. We barely qualify as a democracy anymore. Democratic voters fear for America. And again, this is this is a year into the Biden presidency. And that article is an indication. The sidestepping the fact anyway that the United States of America isn't a democracy. <laughs> uh, and, and though it's been attempted many times throughout world history. There's no operating democracy in the world, nor one that was ever able to sustain. The overarching point still survives here. As noted by the Times editorial staff, following a focus group of Democrat voters, they found this, quoting it. The most surprising thing to us was their shaky faith in the Democratic Party itself. And specific to January 6, 2021, the Times quoted one Democrat voter from the focus group as saying, I want future historians to remember that all of that happened because of the corrupt system that already existed. So nearly two years later, as the anti-democratic party is involved in a full court press to deny Americans of the dem- democratic process of electing a president of their choosing, we're seeing increasingly large numbers of once low information voters open their eyes to the realities of what they've been voting for. I'll bring you the latest on this next. I'm Brian Mudd, in for the great one. Mud love in. Traveling for the holidays? Pure Talk has you covered because they just added international roaming to over 30 countries. That's right. Whether you're making calls from the Vatican or on a beach in the Bahamas, you're covered. From the steps of Buckingham Palace or your villa in Santorini, you dial away. And here's the best part. There is no rate increase. Pure Talk still saves the average family almost $1,000 a year with plans starting at just 20 bucks a month. And... They put you on America's most dependable 5G network. So the coverage is second to none. So don't delay, folks. Switch to Pure Talk, a veteran-owned wireless company with simply the best U.S. customer service team. Now with international roaming to over 30 countries. Go to puretalk.com slash Levin. That's puretalk.com slash L-E-V-I-M to make the switch. And you'll save an additional 50% off your first month. That's big. That's puretalk.com slash Levin to start saving on wireless right now. House Judiciary Committee Chairman and Trump ally Jim Jordan sending a letter to special counsel Jack Smith demanding information from Smith about the investigation they think is politically motivated. Smith was appointed by Attorney General Merrick Garland to lead the investigation into whether President Trump acted illegally to overturn the 2020 election and his handling of classified documents. Jordan and Congressman Andy Biggs telling Smith they have, quote, significant concerns about your commitment to even handed justice. Yeah, you think Uh, that is Fox's Ryan Schmelz with the report, by the way. And even then, and even then, whatever one thinks of Jack Smith, 
even then, Jack Smith, with his multiple federal cases, one exclusively dedicated to the January 6th riot, the alleged role Trump played in trying to overturn the 2020 election, even then, Jack Smith couldn't find enough evidence to even attempt a charge of incitement to insurrection in the criminal justice system. Yet the Colorado Supreme Court says, yeah, you know what? Guilty of uh, insurrection. Take that guy off the ballot. Ah, That isn't the anti-democratic party in motion. I, I don't really know what is. Brian Muddy in for Mark Levin, and we've been talking about the anti-democratic party, the effort uh, by the Colorado Supreme Court and, and what comes next. But most recently, I've also been talking about the marketing scam of the Democratic Party and how many low information voters, as Rush Limbaugh used to refer to them as, many of those folks were brought into the Democratic Party because they wanted to support democracy. They really were just kind of altruistic that way and, you know, just naive. But that started to change. A couple of years ago, you had the New York Times start to catch on to this in a focus group with Democrat voters. We have seen in elections increasingly Hispanic and Latino voters that have been moving aggressively towards the right. And on this note, You take a look at Joe Biden's current approval rating with Hispanics and Latinos. 40% approval to 49% disapproval. Biden's approval rating with voters between the ages of 18 to 34. Just 29% approval to 56% disapproval. And it's not just that they're increasingly clear that Joe Biden is not the answer that they've been looking for. It's that they're increasingly aware That perhaps Donald Trump is. In the latest Fox News polling from a couple days ago, voters under 30 are supporting Trump over Biden in a hypothetical rematch by 13 points. Got that? Voters under 30 supporting Trump in a rematch with Biden by 13 points. That is a 36 point swing. 36 points. From just over three years ago. That type of move is unheard of in modern American politics for any potential Republican presidential candidate. I mean, for any Republican presidential candidate to even show any kind of a lead with young voters is like, what? But let alone when you're talking about potential double digit leads. And it's it's all that much more dramatic when we're talking about the same two candidates in a 36 percent shift in voting behavior. People are starting to catch on. There's room for optimism here. Take some of your calls next. Brian Mudd in for the great one. Mark Levin. Traveling for the holidays? Pure Talk has you covered because they just added international roaming to over 30 countries. That's right. Whether you're making calls from the Vatican or on a beach in the Bahamas, you're covered. From the steps of Buckingham Palace or your villa in Santorini, you dial away. And here's the best part. There is no rate increase. Pure Talk still saves the average family almost $1,000 a year with plans starting at just 20 bucks a month. And they put you on America's most dependable 5G network. So the coverage is second to none. So don't delay, folks. Switch to Pure Talk, a veteran-owned wireless company with simply the best U.S. customer service team. Now with international roaming to over 30 countries. Go to puretalk.com slash Levin, that's puretalk.com slash L-E-V-I-M, to make the switch, and you'll save an additional 50% off your first month. That's big. That's puretalk.com slash Levin to start saving on wireless right now. Mark Levin, an unapologetic patriot and unapologetic constitutionalist. You can reach him at 877-381-3811. CBP sources are telling Fox we are now at over 200,000 migrant encounters in just the first 20 days of December. That's enough to fill up two entire Rose Bowls and still have some overflow in just three weeks. We are averaging now 
10,000 migrant encounters every single day for the month of December. Those kind of numbers used to be completely unheard of, unimaginable. Now it is the reality every 24 hours here at our southern border. That is Fox's Bill Malugin on that report, and it's become such a political problem for Biden that he is now sending administration officials to Mexico uh, to d- discuss the border. Uh, not confident anything is, is going to change. Speaking of throwing out the rule of law, I mean, there's just absolute lawlessness that has existed at the southern border, right? I mean, there's been a, a dereliction of duty by the president of the United States, by this administration, to uphold the rule of law in this country. And it's consistent with what we've been talking about, which is the the idea of the Democratic Party. It, it, it is a farce. The Democratic Party by name is a marketing scam. Brian Mudd in for the great one, Mark Levin. And, you know, the the marketing scam has always been. But the better news, as I was talking about be, before the break, is that increasingly People who've been light on information, they're becoming wiser, quicker than we've ever seen in the polling age. And the polling age goes back to the 1930s. Again, if you're just joining us, what we are seeing is a 36% swing in voters under the age of 30 and a hypothetical Trump-Biden rematch from just over three years ago. Trump showing a double-digit lead with young voters now. The once low-information voters are starting to wake up and realize the so-called Democratic Party for what it is. So the more that the left attempts to take out Trump, the other important news here is the more that this trend appears to grow. People, increasingly, they have their eyes open. And that's the silver lining in all of this. As it turns out, many one-time Democrats, they actually do want a democratic process to play out. Imagine that. Hey, uh, speaking about the Democrat Party, the anti-Democratic Party as the case may be, you're looking for a last-minute Christmas gift? How about the Democrat Party Hates America? Mark Levin's latest number one bestseller it's waiting for you and you can go ahead and get a copy in a store again in a stocking right away you can also get your first edition signed copies of the democrat party hates america at levinsign.com that's where the only place you can get them actually is levinsigned.com so go check that out all right let's go to randy in north carolina randy welcome to the show Hey, thank you very much for taking my call. Uh, get right to it because I'm sure you got other callers. Appreciate you filling in, first off. Um, I want to go back to Charles earlier when he called me and talked about state sovereignty. Now, the states are sovereign, and they're given certain duties within the Constitution regarding the constructs of the election, but not necessarily the material of the election. That's one point I would make. But another issue I have with this situation in Colorado is, first off, I don't believe January 6th was an insurrection in any context at all the people that were there the only people that were armed were uh, the guards in the in the in the capital and they were the ones doing the shooting no one else and so uh i don't believe that represents an insurrection in the first place another element i think is going under the 14th amendment if you look at the context of the 14th amendment and i think this is another thing trump got right and he was talking about trying to get people to relook at that, is the 14th Amendment wasn't trying to create a path to citizenship universally. It was dealing with a particular issue from its time and talking about people that had formerly been held in bondage that were born in the states would be treated as, you know, would be treated as citizens, and they shouldn't be shunned or separated from any due processes and fair treatments by the states or whatever. And that's clearly evident from Section 4 of the 14th Amendment, which talks about the public debts, and it's talking about not assuming public debts that were part of a state's participation. Yeah, 
Yeah, appreciate the the uh, the call, Randy. And look, you 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 covered some territory, and you've made good points in the process. And you know, to to the crux of the matter about an insurrection, y- you have the individuals that have been tried, and we know the outcomes in many of these cases. Donald Trump has not been put on trial for incitement to insurrection in the criminal justice system. But he has before Congress in an impeachment proceeding where he was acquitted. So specific to his role, regardless of what one wants to call what happened on January 6, 2021, that is the matter of fact. But to the to the broader point, yeah, I mean, look, was it a credible effort to overthrow the the you know federal government? Was there any chance that whatever was going to be with the people who participated in the illegal behavior, which was, of course, the overwhelming minority there. But even those that that would have engaged in illegal behavior, that they would have somehow overthrown the government. I I, I do think that, you know, you're you you bring up a relevant point about, you know, the the stretch there to to call that is very much a riot, very much, uh, you know, a, a group of of bad actors that were the minority that were involved Many unanswered questions still about the role of principals involved in the decision making. Everybody from House Speaker Nancy Pelosi to the mayor to actions taken by Capitol Police officers themselves. The questions that are still unanswered about Donald Trump authorizing the National Guard ahead of time, yet that request being rejected. There Obviously, a lot of those questions that that still exist, but the 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 broader point remains that to the extent, uh, you know, that the context matters with Donald Trump, ballot access, whatever else. Well, the one time that it was brought before the body that makes the decisions about qualification or disqualification for president of the United States, the man was acquitted. Let's go to Ernest in Dallas. Ernest, welcome to the show. Yes. A while ago, you were saying that you don't think this has anything to do with Donald Trump. I I think this has everything to do with Donald Trump. When Donald Trump came into office, it, it changed the whole scope of things. He just blew the whole thing up and nothing is nothing is normal anymore. Not anything. Now, now I call myself an independent voter because I, I'm I'm not going to vote for Joe Biden again. Th- that's not going to happen because of the border. He just failed on that. And, and so, but, Ernest, uh, I'm interested in hearing what you have to say. But just uh, so you, you you said again, so you you did vote for Biden the first time. I I did vote for Biden because I didn't think Donald Trump had any reliable. Any 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 way to run the government, he had no knowledge of how to do it, and okay. I didn't think he would he would do us a good job. That's okay. my thinking. But 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 I but now you have Nikki Haley, you have Chris Christie, you have Ron DeSantis, and I think those are real candidates that would do a very good job for the Republican Party. Would you vote for you mentioned those three earners? Would you vote for one of those three if one of those three happened to be the Republican nominee for president? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I would do that. Yes. All right. But I think Donald Trump is going to be in so much trouble fighting every day because he'll be, you know, in court because of this. He'll be in court because of that. And let's say he does win. Not as not as president. He won't. (laughs) <laughs> not as as president of the united states that, that scenario wouldn't be there and uh ernest oh, look, I, I i do appreciate the call and you know i want to take you on on the level and it seems like you're honest you're welcome to your opinion uh first to clarify um you know something that that i presented i have a saying and it is the the crux of anything that i present to you my my saying is that there are two sides to stories and one side of facts so I don't operate on a premise of, well, I think this or, well, I think that I'm not the kind of person who shoots from the hip. So uh, there are two sides of stories or one set of facts. I establish those and I do have opinions that I form based upon 
the facts uh, as we know them to be. So when I made reference to this not being about Trump, the reference is that this is much bigger because, again, if we are a linear, a group of linear thinkers, a linear thinker goes, oh, you know, uh, you know, if Donald Trump isn't on on ballots, it's about Donald Trump. And, you know, if I don't like him or if I think he did something wrong, whether or not, you know, he's even been tried for it in the criminal justice system, which he has not been, even if there is no due process for what he has been uh, you know, d- decided to be guilty of by the Colorado Supreme Court in the case of, of insurrection. No due process, but they just say eh, guilty of it. Uh, e- e- even then, uh, you know, it- it's not about Donald Trump because it's about voters, right? E- Donald Trump can still be elected president of the United States, even if, and, and a caller brought this up last hour. And it, was, it was a relevant point that was made with otherwise, you know, kind of confused information behind it you can write in sure you can write in whoever you want there and uh, so you could have trump's name removed from ballots but who does that do the biggest disservice to does it do a bigger disservice to donald trump or does it do a bigger disservice to voters who seek to vote for donald trump as president of the united states which uh, if you take a look at an average of polling clear across this country is the majority choice, not just in a Republican primary, but in a head to head rematch with with Joe Biden. So you're doing the bigger disservice to voters, but then it gets even bigger because, again, it's it's still so much more. It's not about Donald Trump at the point where Donald Trump isn't even in the conversation anymore. But you have precedent that has been set by courts under which due process doesn't matter anymore, under which. Courts can decide guilt or innocence without a trial on the subject matter. And if it can be done to Donald Trump, what the hell do you think they can do to you? That is the point that is there. It's it's not a, I I think this, or I think that about Donald Trump. I I don't put a lot of credence into, well, you know, I think about things. I make it a, a point of knowing things and going from there. We'd all be served well by, by taking that approach Let's go to Sean in Maryland. Sean, welcome to the show. Oh, hey. Hello, Brian. You're doing that. Yeah, I appreciate it, Sean, but I think uh, I think we have a bad connection there, so we'll see if we can't get a better connection and, and reconnect with you. Let's go to Dave in Michigan. Dave, welcome to the show. Hey, Brian. Thanks for taking my call. Merry Christmas. Bet. Merry Christmas. Appreciate it. I've got this question has been driving me crazy. So obviously the Supreme Court will probably unanimously shoot down what they're doing in Colorado. Um, So Trump gets back on the ballot when they issue that ruling. Does that become a blanket ruling in other words that they set a precedent for the rest of the states i happen to live here in michigan under the wicked witch of the west uh <laughs> you know if michigan decides to try and do that does it just automatically uh throw the circuit breaker so other states can't do that and i do yeah, have Dave. a second question for you okay well they, that is a a great question uh first and foremost as it pertains to your state in michigan the challenge That would have applied to the primary election. That's already been decided. A federal judge in Michigan has thrown out the case, dismissed the case uh, that attempted to remove Donald Trump from uh, the Republican primary ballots in the state. Now, they could come back uh, based upon what may be here. They could come back in the general election and and try to get Trump off again. And, you know, we'd have to see what would happen at that point. But it's already been decided in Michigan uh, for the primary. The broader question about the Supreme Court stepping in. One, I hope you're right, and I hope it's a nine to nothing unanimous decision. It most certainly should be to overturn the Colorado decision, though I'm not entirely sure that is uh, in, in the car. It'll be a real educational moment. Whatever point we get a decision from the Supreme Court, uh, that will really tell you what's what with Supreme Court justices. But the answer to to that question is in the 
ruling itself, how broad they decide to to write it. They could have a narrow ruling, which even in this subject matter, you know, would likely apply to cases brought in other states. You have the same groups that are challenging in multiple states, for example, in many cases, the case, the group that brought the case in Colorado has also brought one in Minnesota, for example. And so it would likely apply to the same legal challenges. But the answer ultimately comes down to how limited the decision is by the way that it is written or how broad it is. They certainly could write it broad enough that it would apply to any potential challenge, not just in the primary, but in the general election should Donald Trump emerged a Republican primary candidate as well. I'm Brian Mudd, in for the great one. Mudd Lovin. Traveling for the holidays? Pure Talk has you covered, because they just added international roaming to over 30 countries. That's right. Whether you're making calls from the Vatican or on a beach in the Bahamas, you're covered. From the steps of Buckingham Palace or your villa in Santorini, you dial away. And here's the best part. There is no rate increase. Pure Talk still saves the average family almost $1,000 a year with plans starting at just 20 bucks a month. And... They put you on America's most dependable 5G network, so the coverage is second to none. So don't delay, folks. Switch to Pure Talk, a veteran-owned wireless company with simply the best U.S. customer service team. Now with international roaming to over 30 countries. Go to puretalk.com slash Levin, that's puretalk.com slash L-E-V-I-M, to make the switch, and you'll save an additional 50% off your first month. That's big. That's puretalk.com slash Levin to start saving on wireless right now. On my first day back in the White House, I will terminate every open border policy of the Biden administration, stop the invasion on our southern border. And begin the largest domestic deportation operation in American history. We have no choice. No country can sustain. Yeah, we most certainly cannot sustain the level of lawlessness. And it's being shown, right? Take a look at blue cities that have been overwhelmed with illegal immigrants. Your sanctuary cities, whereby you now have Texas that's just flying illegal immigrants into sanctuary cities you see how unsustainable it has become and also why it's become that thorny of a political issue for president biden at this point as well because at the point where you have blue cities and blue states that are saying something's got to give you have a problem but of course the bigger problem is the rule of law the rule of law that is being ignored by the president of the united states and the rule of law the rule of constitutional law that's been ignored by the Colorado Supreme Court and their effort to try to remove Donald Trump from, for now, the primary presidential ballot. Which, by the way, on that note, good heads up from uh, listeners, you have to file to be able to have your write-in ballot votes counted in the state of Colorado. To qualify for the primary, Trump would have to write in his intent to the state by December 29th, December 29th, or he wouldn't be able to be in the uh, the primary there. Brian Mudd in for the great one, Mark Levin. He's here. He's here. Now broadcasting from the underground command post. Deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. Taking a look at the southern border, two train crossings there in Eagle Pass, as well as El Paso, they remain closed with agents being redirected to the border to deal with the surging migrant crisis. While those crossings remain closed, corn, soybean, wheat, and more cannot get across. And this is not the only supply chain major disruption that we are currently seeing when it comes to freight. Houthi attacks in the Red Sea in response to the Israel-Hamas war have now caused freight carriers to avoid the Suez Canal altogether to prevent being attacked. Uh, Good times, right? So on top of everything else... The fecklessness that is Joe Biden and his existence as president that makes the world less safe, that continues to lead to conflict, almost certainly has led to what we have seen in Israel play out. It absolutely 
is attributable to what's happened at the southern border. And now on top of everything else, including having to pay for the cost of illegal immigration, including the cost to us associated with the Ukraine and Israel Hamas war. And now we have what more inflation coming because of supply chain woes associated with Biden's failures as, as president of the United States. It just keeps getting better. Yeah. Good, good stuff there. Good times. Elections have consequences. Thankfully people seemingly based upon the polls these days, uh, they, they do seem to get that, but assessing the size of our society's problems I think it's pretty important. Brian Mudd in for the great one, Mark Levin. I'm the host of The Brian Mudd Show, uh, which is based out of my home station, WJNO in West Palm Beach. You can catch The Brian Mudd Show podcast wherever you get your podcast, And you can follow me, social media, pretty much any platform, at Brian Mudd Radio. Last time I was with you, uh, I, I talked a little bit about the extent of the problems we have, not only with those that have been supportive of Hamas, supportive of a terrorist organization in this country, but really what goes on in the Middle East. Specifically, that the Palestinian people are overwhelmingly supportive of Hamas. This is a narrative that... Ever since October 7th and and that attack over there, ever since then, well, the poor Palestinian people, well, not really. Not really. I mean, they elected Hamas to begin with. And the Pew Research Center found that three quarters of the Palestinian people have historically been supportive of Hamas's use of Sharia law to, quote, rid the world of, of infidels by destroying Israel. That's the stated mission of Hamas. It's always been the stated mission of Hamas since their founding. Now, while we don't have up-to-date polling available in Gaza today, we do have information for those of us who remain far away, though many still have families that are in harm's way in, in Israel. And throughout the generations, it has been said that there's more that unites us than divides us, which is true. I mean, we are all made in the the image of God after all. However, it's clear that far too many people have strayed from that basic belief and their system of beliefs. And as unimaginable as the actions of the terrorists are, it's equally unimaginable for most of us that wide swaths of our society would side with terrorists. But that has been the case. You know, polling of Americans in the wake of the Hamas terror attacks on Israel and now 11 weeks into this war, it paints a picture about just how pervasive the related problems in our society are. On the question of in Middle East conflict, who do you side with more? We have 68 percent that say Israel, but 18 percent say Palestinians. That includes a quarter of all Democrats who Say they side with terrorists. So it's far from just being AOC squad in Washington, D.C. You, you do have some level of broad-based support across the country. Now, could you imagine if effectively a fifth of Americans had sided with al-Qaeda following 9-11? Yeah, that's essentially where we are in, in this country today as it pertains to Hamas and Israel. And education, as always, is key. Only it's likely... What's been taken out of public education in the past 43 years by the Department of Education, the religious principles this country was founded upon, and and thus any basic sense of morality, it's led to where we are as a society today. These are people who side with those who decapitate and burn babies, rape mothers, torture fathers, all en route to their ultimate goal of destroying Israel, and eventually all of the infidels, which includes everyone who doesn't see the world the way that they do. You're, you're also familiar with the saying to keep your friends close and keep your enemies closer. Doesn't seem to be advisable in this case, I, I, w- I would not say. But what it does do is help illustrate why there's such a divide in this country and so many other issues generally, I, I believe. 
when you have people who support Islamic terrorists, there's not really any middle ground to be found. Speaking of which, you know, war, huh? Yeah, what is it good for? Now, you, you could pull out Edwin Starr's uh, Vietnam anthem. It, it's wise in its own ways, but entirely impractical in others. And you know, as we learned on, on 9-11, as was learned at, at Pearl Harbor, for that matter, wars and jihads that start overseas don't always stay overseas. And, and the question really comes down to a matter of priorities. Your faith, your family, your career, your retirement, the holidays, probably your priorities today. Wars thousands of miles away, not so much for most people. But, again, because President Biden's feckless existence and his current occupation, because it makes the world less safe, here we are, as the world's bad actors continue to take advantage of the weakness that he projects. And once again, it makes all of us less safe. Not a lot of people paid attention to this, but in recent weeks, you had FBI Director Christopher Wray that warned Congress that we are, quote, by the actions of Hamas, this is Ray uh, to Congress, the actions of Hamas and its allies serves as an inspiration, the likes of which we haven't seen since ISIS launched its so-called caliphate several years ago. In just the past few weeks, multiple foreign terrorist organizations have called for attacks against Americans in the West. The reality is that the terrorism threat has been elevated throughout 2023, but the ongoing war And the Middle East has raised the threat of attack against Americans in the United States to a whole nother level. It is a time to be concerned. We're in a dangerous period. It's the kind of stuff that gives you the warm and fuzzy, especially around the holidays, right? So, yeah, I mean, look, the the next many months, the next 13 months, basically, they're going to be tough around the world, potentially right here at home with, with no shortage of bad actors that wish to do us harm. And an open border... That the House Judiciary Committee found as of two months ago, you hear numbers at the border. I had a clip earlier in the show about like 10,000 illegal immigrants a day. And at some point, it just becomes numbers. And it is true. You'll have the Biden administration from time to time say, well, you know, there there are some deportations that take place. We we are getting rid of of people that have, uh, you know, committed crimes, that kind of thing. The net of it all, if you're wondering, net of deportations, how many illegal immigrants are known to have come into the United States that have either been released on the interior by the administration or who evaded Border Patrol? The net number as of two months ago, according to the House Judiciary Committee, was 3.8 million. That's a total that's higher than the population in 22 states. I'm sure they're all good people, too, right? I'm sure there are no bad actors. I'm sure there are no potential terrorists. You know, recently, we've learned that Border Patrol interdicted illegal immigrants crossing the border with explosive devices that were, quote, tailored for terrorism. And the question is, how many more may have or, or soon will make it in? But hey, you, know, you still got no Trump tweets, right? I mean, that was the important thing for so many people. It's just those mean Trump tweets. But anyway... Once again, being under the kind of terror threat that we haven't been under since Joe Biden, not so coincidentally, was vice president. I mean, it really is just so much better than being safe under that uncouth orange man who projected strength and who literally bombed the blank out of ISIS just as he promised. And that's what happened. All that went away. We had a de-escalation of conflict around the world. The bad actors didn't act out at all. Well, Donald Trump was president. And now we have the FBI director saying we are at the highest level of threat we've been since ISIS had carried out its caliphate, was actively recruiting in the United States, carrying out attacks in the United States. So from Afghanistan to China, from Iran to Russia, from the southern border to your neighborhood, Joe Biden's very existence as, as president of the United States makes the world less safe. And it's a mistake many Americans who voted for him have since realized that they made. Now, this is the better news. Joe Biden now has a positive approval rating. How many states? Biden won 25 states in in 2020. How many states do you think he has a positive approval rating in right now? Survey says 
just three. Hawaii, Maryland, and Massachusetts. Which makes you wonder what really is, is going on with people in those states. But anyway, when you're a Democrat and even a majority of Californians and New Yorkers are not picking up what you're putting down, I, I think that says something. It does make you wonder who looks at three years of Biden inflation, Bidenomics, a world on the brink of World War Three. What's going on, uh, you know, at our southern border and says, yeah, you know what? Give me some more of that guy's sweet political action. But on the, the other hand, when you look at how many people voted for him originally, we are seeing progress. In fact, massive progress. And to put this in an electoral college context, Biden maintains positive approval in states representing only 25 of the 270 necessary votes to become president. But the bigger issue that we continue to see, all these other implications, right? Now it's supply chain again. Biden's lawless border, supply chain issues. Biden's fecklessness where bad actors rise up and attack the innocent, whether it's Ukraine or Israel. Supply chain problems. So on top of everything else, even that leads to you having less access to goods, leads to higher costs for the things that you do have access to. And what I started out this hour by talking about, about a fifth of Americans who are siding with terrorists that actually take a look at terrorists and go, you know what, they've, they've got a point here. You had a, a letter pinned earlier this week from a number of folks, including Senator Ted Cruz, Congressman, Florida Congressman Michael Waltz, and, and Brian Mast. It was a public statement on the Israel-Hamas war. And what is said in it is a real important message for all of us. I'll bring that to you next. I'm Brian Mudd, in for the great one. Mud love in. Hamas has publicly rejected Israeli discussions of another ceasefire, saying that no further hostages will be released until the war is officially over. Now, while Hamas says one thing publicly, they are saying something else privately. We do know just yesterday, Ismail Khania, the leader of Hamas, traveled from Doha to Cairo to continue the discussions about the possibility of a new deal. It comes as Israeli forces say they are close to completing high-intensity ground operations in northern Gaza. Yeah, so, uh, look, one, one thing that is assured is that the most efficient way to release hostages is to kill the terrorists that are holding them, to put an end to this once and for all. Brian Mudd in for the great one, Mark Levin. And it is remarkable how, faced with the atrocities committed by Hamas, historically, that their premise is the eradication of Israel. That's what they were founded upon, the eradication of of Israel. And it's unfortunate that about a fifth of this country is outright sympathetic to Hamas. And that we've seen levels that have actually been rising in, in recent weeks on that note as well. And that brought about public st statement on the Israel Hamas war. This came out on Tuesday by a number of elected representatives and administration officials, past and present. It goes like this. It says, we are all individuals who devoted significant portions of our lives to the national security of the, Un the United States. Some of us served in senior positions in the U.S. military, some of us in, in policy departments and agencies, some of us in the intelligence community, some of us were political appointees, and some were a career officials. Many of us worked for presidents of both political parties. All of us believe that Israel's victory in its war to eradicate Hamas and other terrorist proxies of the Islamic Republic of Iran is critical for Middle East peace and stability. Moreover, Israel is at the vanguard of a global battle to defend and protect the values that define Western civilization. As such, the success of Israel's efforts is vital to the interests of the United States and all other countries that cherish life, and liberty. They go on to discuss the October 7th Hamas terror attack. 
the kidnapping, the raping, the murdering, the torturing. They talk about propaganda that is used and how propaganda has been perpetuated. You where you have news organizations that all throughout the, the course of the conflict have quoted Hamas agencies. You have news organizations that have presented Palestinian people often as victims of Hamas rather than those that voted Hamas into power and that overwhelmingly support. Again, the Pew Research Center has spent time studying this three quarters. It's not just that they put them in power and then decided to regret that decision. It's that three quarters Palestinian people supportive of all this. And so what the, the letter says is we therefore commend the Congress for supporting the people of Israel, the IDF, the government of Israel, and for ensuring that the IDF has the munitions and armaments they need to defeat Hamas and other regional actors. Such assistance is in America's national interest and it must continue. They say, let Israel win. May God defend all that is right and good. Not only is it the right thing to do, but it also might determine what you can buy in the store and how much you're going to pay for it. It all matters. Brian Mudd in for the great one, Mark Levin. Mark Levin, the modern voice of the Founding Fathers. This is the Mark Levin Show. Dial in now at 877-381-3811. The UN's World Food Program said in a statement Wednesday that half the population in Gaza is starving, and then they said Thursday it was more like a quarter of the population, though everyone there is experiencing what they call a food crisis. Getting aid through has been difficult. Large truckloads were headed into Gaza today through the Karim Shalom crossing, but a blast in the area forced the UN to stop. Prior aid has been stolen by Hamas. The IDF released footage earlier this month showing Hamas fighters taking much of the aid off the trucks and hitting civilians who were trying to take some of it. Uh, other than that, that is uh, Fox's Jessica Rosenthal in the report, by the way. But other other than that, and, and the raping, the torturing, the the murdering of innocent Israelis, I mean, they're, they're really very nice people that, that no doubt deserve the support of about a fifth of Americans that remarkably somehow or another support pure evil which Hamas has always stood for. Again, Hamas, since the time of their founding in 88, and this was all part of what I brought you, it would have been November 22nd uh, when I was guessing for Mark Levin. Uh, it, the, the principles behind Hamas that were known, well-known, by the Palestinian people at the time they elected them and are still broadly supported to this day. There is a right and a wrong side to this And it really has never been in question, but that there is a question that we're having these conversations that you have polling that suggests that support for Israel continues to fall in this country, that we have numerous administration officials, past and and present, members of Congress that are currently there and and former, that put out a letter to the public going, uh, guys, wake up. I mean, this is like really evil, these people, what they're doing, and also it can find its way to you. I mean, that we even have to have these conversations. Uh, it, it leads one to wonder. But, you know, a lot of what, what this gets back to is is ignorance. And we look to eradicate that around here. And certainly the great one uh, seeks to do that as he lays out what the Democrat Party is. I talked about the anti-Democratic Party, the, the marketing scam that has always been the name the Democratic Party. Well, the Democrat Party Hates America is... A great opportunity for people to become informed from you to those who probably know a lot less than you. And so whether you need a last minute Christmas gift, pick up the Democrat Party Hates America. You can also get your limited first edition signed copies of the Democrat Party Hates America. To do that, you go to LevinSigned.com. That's LevinSigned.com. The only place that you will find those. All right, let's go to Mordecai in New Jersey. Mordecai, welcome to the show. I uh, I just wanted to say, first off, you're doing a great job uh, subbing in, you know, tag teaming for Mark. Um, second off, you know, tag teaming off of what you just introduced, you know, if, I, I haven't heard this on the radio, um, but the Lincoln Memorial was actually defaced. Um, 
it was vandalized. They spray painted free Gaza on the steps. And it's just, I mean, <laughs> obviously I've, I'm sure you know, you're aware of this, but just, you know, the situation for, for Jews, people who support Israel, Jews especially, it's just become, you know, actually drastic. You know, you cannot be identifiably Jewish in the streets anymore or in train stations if you have a protest of these, or I wouldn't even call it a protest, I'd call it a riot, but um, you get where I'm going with it. I mean, these, it's just unsafe right now, and it's it's despicable. The fact that the fact that um, these politicians are coming out and saying this, uh, you know, these are bad people, that, that doesn't matter. They're not going to care. They're not going to change their mind because of that. We're already at the point where it's like, you know, let Israel and, and let Israel do what it needs to do. And the fact that these people don't even care about the actual genocides going on, Darfur, China, Myanmar, they don't they don't care. There's way more people that have died in those. Yeah, no, like I, I uh, hear what you're saying. And I also detect the frustration, which uh, is is certainly justified. A couple of things. Hey, one, the, the point about hatred. You know, hatred, period, is is bad, right? To have hate in one's heart for other people, there's nothing good that comes of that. I mean, you can, you can identify people that are problems, but to have and carry hate, it's a whole other level. And, and so, one, to have the, the kind of hate that, that you're talking about and to to face the, the Lincoln Memorial and, and these types of things and, you know, with, with anti-Semitic messaging. And it, it does lead to a different level with the people that act out in that way. And that one's complicated. It, it, it's really hard to open somebody's heart that's been hardened that way. That's a more difficult conversation that often has to happen only when somebody is open to the information. But there is another dynamic where people are just woefully misinformed. You have a lot of people that will turn to mainstream news outlets that have a completely different worldview on what's happened. People that believe that Palestinian people are are broadly victims. People that will perpetuate the the notion that Hamas isn't uh, as evil as they clearly are. People that will lie about Israel and the state of the occupation, which ended back in 1993, of the contested territories. The, and so you, you have people that will tune in to information and hear that, yeah, you know what, the, the Israelis really have been the oppressors right along. And maybe it wasn't right that they raped and tortured and all that, but I mean, they, they got a point here. So that kind of stuff you can fix with information. And that's where conversations are, are important. Uh, do I broadly think things are going to change because of this letter or, you know, even concerted efforts? Maybe not, but it's worth trying. Beyond that, as we, we take a look at, you know, where we're going as a country. I mentioned earlier in the show, we are seeing what Rush used to refer to as low information voters. Turn hard. Their eyes are being opened in ways that they we have not seen generationally before. You know, polling is polling this far out. Who the heck knows? But I mean, even if there's any close, any semblance of truth to some of the polling that's out there, we're seeing, for example, with voters under 30, a 36 point turnaround and who they would vote for if an election were held today and a hypothetical rematch be between Biden and Trump. A 36-point turnaround. We're double-digit percentages of voters under the age of 30 are are breaking for Trump, where you would have Trump leading by double digits, 13 points to be uh, exact with the the most recent polling. Voters under 30, Trump being Biden by 13. So that is significant, and it's where I I don't think we should necessarily just give up um, informationally. Let's go to Walter in Virginia. Walter, welcome to the show. Yes, Brian, thank you, and Merry Christmas. I'd like to question the premise here, if you don't mind. Uh, sure. Democrats rarely do things for the reason they claim. You know, they did not pass Obamacare to improve health care. They did not take over student loans to make life better for students. Uh, you know, they did not pass border funding to keep illegals, drugs, or terrorists out. And finally, knowing how it would infuriate the base, 
They don't charge Trump to put him in jail or to prevent him from running. They do it, in fact, to secure him the Republican nomination. Trump has a disapproval rating of 56 percent today, the general population. So there's a reason to do that. So, Walter, you, you raise an interesting point on on that note. So uh, let, let's run with that for a minute. Democrats wanted Trump in 2016 as well, right? Correct. How'd that work out? He lost the popular vote. Well, does that so matter in if, deciding who a president of the United States is? Worth that. If another Republican had won, they would have won the the. Uh, you know, popular vote at all. Listen, all we could do is talk about today in the most recent numbers. Trump sure. endorsed Kennedy in 2022. That's not the most recent information, Walter. Uh, you know, Trump endorsed candidates. I mean, you know, whatever, you know, in terms of the number of people that listen to endorsements to begin with. Um, if you're I mean, like, I sidestep the fact that you're engaged in, in wholesale propaganda about, you know, border funding and everything else. You know what the I mean, it's not worth getting into each one of those those comments that you made because it'll I'll go off in tangents and it's absurd. The border funding has been to create more personnel at the border to import illegal immigrants, to make the process easier for more illegal immigrants to be transported to your city. Uh, so that is absurd on on levels in lawlessness and ways in which this country has has never seen. So if you want to they're they're supporting, you know, funding the border and everything else. Bull crap. It's it's a you I, I you want to talk about a premise. That's a false premise. But here's what I'll tell you, Walter, because uh, 2022 election is not the most recent information. The most recent information. And you surely can see this. The average of polls out there show even in a popular vote scenario right now, Trump most likely beating Biden straight up. That's one. Two, Trump beating Biden in every single swing state from the 2020 election. That's two. And three, Trump actually expanding the map from what he won in the 2016 presidential election by adding Nevada, a state that he did not win then. So if you want to talk about the most recent information that is available, well, that's kind of where the conversation leads. And I will say this. It very well may be the case that Democrats have repeated what they tried in 2016 to get Donald Trump to be the candidate. However, much as it did in 2016, there's a really good chance that if that is the end game, uh, there will be an even more devastating result than what happened in, in 2016, the way that things are pacing, because it's not just everything that I just mentioned. It's that the numbers for Biden continue to get worse. It's that the numbers for Trump continue to get better. And it's the fact that every single time that Donald Trump is indicted or every single time you have activist action like the Colorado Supreme Court saying Americans shouldn't even have the ability to have Trump's name on a ballot to be able to vote for him. Every single time stuff like that happens, we see Trump's numbers rise. And last but not least, my friend, you have Joe Biden, who has positive approval in three states, three, three small states. So, yeah, you want to talk about it? I mean, good, good luck with that. Good luck with that. Uh, let's go to Jack in Illinois. Jack, welcome to the show. Oh, Brian, can you hear me? Have you loud and clear? Okay, great. Okay, but your last call, I made an excellent uh, analysis on democracy and the Democratic Party. And I'd like to point something out. I've heard these things on the radio all the time, and I finally decided I better at least make a shot at trying to call in and straighten things out. Democracy is more of a political stratagem than a form of government that can destabilize any government in which it's injected. That is why the phrase, we shall win the battle for democracy, can be found in the Communist Manifesto. <clears throat> Excuse me. I like to point out that the United States of America is not, nor ever has been, a democracy. The United States Constitution makes no mention of democracy. In fact, Article 6, Section 4 of the Constitution promulgates none other than a nationwide guarantee to a Republican form of government. The word republic is derived from the Latin Republica, meaning all things public. Generically, a republic would be synonymous with the term popular government. Popular government is simply 
that the people play an active role in the administration of their government. The word democracy is derived from two Greek roots, meaning man to govern. Our constitutional republic, the supreme law of the land, as declared in Article 6, is for all intents and purposes a government of laws and not of men. It's exactly right, Jack. I mean, and, and what you've laid out there is is right on point. It goes, and in fact, uh, just in lockstep with what I was discussing in the second hour of the show with the marketing scam that is the Democratic Party. Of course, we are a representative republic. And as a matter of fact, there is no democracy operating in the world. And there has never been a sustainable democracy in world history. You even have many uh, tribal governments that have attempted democracy historically, none of which have ever been successful in maintaining it for any length of time. And so uh, it is it is a, a good point. Let's go to Lamar. Lamar, welcome to the show. Oh, good evening, Mr. Mudd. I just would like to commend you uh, tonight. Uh, you're obviously a brilliant and sensitive man. Uh, and I'm loath to take issue with anything you say. You're obviously much more intelligent than I am. I would very respectfully say that uh, a hate is an authentic and legitimate response to evil. And I think uh, we are justified in hating individuals and groups who chase Jewish students down college campuses, requiring them to barricade themselves in libraries for fear of losing their lives, as occurred at uh, Cooper Union right here in New York City. Uh, hate is an authentic and uh, legitimate response to evil, and we are justified in hating Hamas and those who support them, uh, sir. That I would submit that to you respectfully. Well, I, I would just say it's not a good thing to hold in your heart, and that is more a, a biblical principle than than anything else. Uh, you know, we're we're called on to to love our our neighbors, not to hate them. Though I completely understand your point and appreciate the call. May God bless you and uh, and Merry Christmas to you as well. And we'll be back in in just a moment. Brian Mud in for the great one. Mud love in. Today is expected to be the busiest at airports nationwide, with TSA expecting more than 2.5 million people going through security today alone, roughly the same number on average each day between now and January. That is Fox's Garrett Tenney, and hopefully if you are participating, if you're en route, uh, it is uh, a a smooth bit of, of travel for you. Hopefully, most of the uh, weather is is going to abate from here. It looks actually by Christmas, what the uh, the weather should be uh, halfway decent most places. Nevertheless, as we are are closing out today, you know, we talked about the anti Democratic Party, the marketing scam that is the Democratic Party, the length and the lengths to which Marxists will go to try to undermine our constitutional rights and doing so most recently through Donald Trump uh, in, and ballot access. Also shared with you during the show places for optimism, especially with the youngest voters as we're seeing historical shifts in their political sentiment as their eyes are becoming open in ways in which they probably wouldn't have if we haven't gone through the kind of adversity that we've gone through under the first near three years of the the Biden administration. So these are the silver linings. And as always, education is key, including during the holidays. And so during this uh, Christmas season, I wish you a a very Merry Christmas. Hopefully uh, you have an educated uh, group of, of family members you'll be with. But regardless, be strong, be well, and I look forward to talking to you soon. Brian Mudd in for the great one, Mark Levin.